first up, you, you know, how much since you took over out here has really changed culturally and physically in this refinery out here? Yeah, so it's it's, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's tremendous change. I was uh, recounting this morning, talking to somebody that I met when I first got here two and a half years ago, um, both in the people, the culture, uh, the way we operate the place, and the plant physically. You know, and I think the physical things are the most evident from the outside of the fence, whether it's the new environmental scrubber or the the shiny new insulation on the 27 miles of steam piping, or you go through the plant as you'll get mm -hmm. a tour later today, and you'll just see the physical conditions have changed dramatically since the last time you were in the doors. And then uh, just seeing the tone and tempo and the momentum of the people and their competency and the culture and the way the way that we're working together is dramatically different today than it was two and a half years ago. Have you found a total buy-in from management all the way down to... Um, to contractors on changing the culture because you you said when you got here that that was going to be what was going to happen there was no it was very point blank as I recall from what you had told me a couple of years ago yeah, yeah. and I, 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 I continue to be uh, I guess uh, humbled and inspired by all the people that come through here uh, their commitment to the site and commitment to make it you know industry leader in personal and process safety and uh, I think the buy-in is increased and evident every day. You look at what, you know, Ike, for example, the way this crew pulled together and not only supported the communities, we helped out in Galveston, we helped out in Texas City, we helped out in Lamarck, but the way we supported each other, mm -hmm. our houses and our rebuild, but also the way that we were able to safely restart the facility within two weeks. I think it shows kind of the new spirit and the culture, and that's as vibrant an example of buy-in as I can I wonder too because the 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 hurricanes almost bookmark or bookend I should say yeah. things for BP. Rita was the we're shutting totally down. Oh, by the way, while we're down, we're going to go ahead and start the process of retooling this refinery in the wake of the March twenty uh, March two thousand five uh, explosions. Now you come to Ike, right. and you're riding out the storm in the brand new building over right. here with new procedures in place and new tech. Can you contrast that? I know you weren't here during Rita. It was some a little bit after that, but yeah. can you contrast that of how much of a difference it, 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 it this place has changed since then? Yeah, well, I think the, the biggest contrast you can see is in the data. You know, it was roughly two weeks after Ike. Uh, we had all the safety reviews done, all the repair activities complete, and the unit safely back up and running. And, uh, you know, seven months after uh, Rita before we had the first kind of crude units back up right. on the first train. And uh, that's a huge contrast in difference. And, and just, again, I, I saw it as much in this outage. I wasn't here for Rita, but the spirit that extended, our guys were working here. They were working in each other's houses. Uh, we had people living together. We had set up a tent city outside where we were taking care of you know, our families, contractors, giving the extra food to the relief agencies, and and you just saw the spirit kind of pour out into the community. So it wasn't even so centric to the refinery, but it really kind of poured out into the rest of the community, helping everybody get better. Let's start with the physical side of things that have changed out here. You mentioned it before, 27 miles of just of the steam piping, I yeah. guess, that's, that's, that's out here. You know, one of the concerns when the retooling was going to begin, people said, all right, if we're just going to put up shiny new metal, that's not going to be that. But let's just talk about the physical side of things. For someone that may have not been out here, say some retiree, just y'all just had your 75th anniversary. Some some retiree comes out here and you took them for a windshield tour out here. What you know? What are the things you would point out to him that are new out here? Yeah, so um, I think the most visible that everybody can see is the uh, the steam that comes off the wet gas scrubber at Cat Three. See that around, and I hear a lot of the fishermen are already starting to use that as a good wind indicator of whether the conditions <laughs> will be good, right? And uh, you know, philosophically, that's scrubbing all the potential emissions out and making sure that our our area is cleaner. And so that's probably the most visible from outside the fence. Inside the fence, like you said, you'll see uh, you know new fractionator towers. You'll see uh, new buildings. You see new ways of working. You see less trucks and less traffic in the plant. Uh, just the tone and tempo is very different than it was in the past. Let's talk about, if, just for the layman's term, we talk about the, the scrubber. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's explain to folks about about that that may not have the technical knowledge of of what that does. You say it scrubs out the emissions, but how does that process work? And uh, so folks have a better idea. Yeah. So so the the wet gas scrubber is basically a, a large tower where you're you're scrubbing by using water and steam and actually um, using some other kind of advanced technologies, and you're taking out NOx and SOx, which are potential pollutants, obviously. Mm -hmm scrubbing those out and also any catalyst fines that could be released into the air. So it's making sure that anything that comes off emissions wise from that unit is as clean as possible. Um, what else physically? I mean, you know, every unit's been rehaul overhauled out right. here and all. Have you expanded the capacity out here and all in the middle of that process as well? We have not expanded. Capacity. Okay, so it's so, pretty much. Yeah, this, you know, Texas City has always been a, a large and complex site and uh, so we've really been focusing on is the safe simplified facility